Let me give you one more proof of this law of mass action for semiconductor in this video. It's a very important law, so we want to make sure that it's crystal clear and you understand it more than uh, more than one uh, way. So let me use uh, these expressions that are derived for the number of uh, electrons and holes. So in one of the previous videos, we derived we derive the expressions for n and p so now let me you know let me just multiply them just to check you know make sure whether this law what it's saying is correct or not so let me multiply these two equations so i'll multiply these two equations and on the left hand side on the left hand side i get n p on the right hand side i get n c n v and then if i multiply two exponent chill terms i just add their exponents so i take a minus sign common and then i get ec minus ef and then i get a plus ef from the whole term and minus ev by kt and then ef cancels with ef and we also know that ec minus ev is equal to the band gap so let me draw the semiconductor band diagram here again so i have my conduction band here my valence band here so ec minus ev is just equivalent to the band gap so i can replace it by that and i can see that my nc into nv is uh, sorry my n into p is is just equal to it's equal to let me write in green it's equal to this nc nv multiplied by exponent of eg by kt and you know in one of the previous videos we had derived that this in fact is equivalent to is equivalent to ni squared so we had derived this formula for intrinsic carrier density which was nc nv exponential eg by 2 kt so this term is again np is equivalent to ni squared which can also be written as n i p i so using this relationships for for uh, for the electrons and hole we also see that that multiplication if you multiply the concentration of electrons and holes it comes out to be a uh, constant which just depends upon the temperature and uh, it's equal to the square of the intrinsic carrier density but let me build some more intuition as to you know why this is the case where this is happening so let's say i have an intrinsic semiconductor so if i have an intrinsic semiconductor my fermi energy lies somewhere close to the band gap or i have equal number of equal number of n and p and you know so in that case this is just equal into n i square now what what happens if i move this if i move this fermi energy so let me move this closer closer to the conduction band so if i move this closer to the conduction band what this expression is telling me is that if i move this if i move this energy closer to my conduction band then my ec minus ef decreases so this term decreases and correspondingly this distance of fermi energy from the valence band this increases so this increases and this separation decreases so this term over here this decreases and this term over here increases and both of them are you know they are giving the concentration of electrons and hole and they have this negative exponential dependence so if this neg negative exponent decreases my number of number of electrons increases exponentially and my number of holes it decreases exponentially so I'm, I'm seeing that exponential dependence coming from here as well where if i'm increasing my number of electrons that involves moving my fermi energy close to my conduction band then i'm decreasing my number of holes similarly instead of moving that fermi level from mid grand gap to here i could move it i could move it close to close to my close to my valence band as well and in th that case i'll have a small ef minus ev so I'll, this would be small but i'll have a large i'll have a large ec minus ef so if i put that again in this formula what i'll see is that my number of number of let me use another color so in that case the number of my electrons would decrease exponentially and my number of holes would increase exponentially so this is another way to derive that same formula